Okay, merci. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I want to talk about two things today. First off, we've made it clear that in the return to work, it should no longer be an option. All Canadians need access to paid sick leave. And we're calling for two weeks of paid sick leave. We know that businesses are struggling right now. So at this point, we want to call on the federal government to deliver this paid sick leave using either the CERB or the EI system to deliver paid sick leave to all Canadians. Premier Horgan recently was asked this question and said that we absolutely need a national approach to paid sick leave. And it's something that we need to work with provinces to deliver. We presented this idea today to the government and the government refused to put paid sick leave into the motion. And so I will be tabling a motion again today to give them a chance to get this right. We need paid sick leave. There is no question about it. It should no longer be an option. No one should make the impossible choice between whether they go to work and risk transmission of infection or staying at home and not being able to pay the bills because they do not have paid sick leave or job protection. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is long-term care. Yesterday, we heard from the Prime Minister when he said it is not the responsibility of the federal government to find a solution for long-term care, for the long-term care crisis. I reject the Prime Minister's claim. After seeing 80, over 80% 80 of the deaths in COVID-19 impacting seniors and seniors living in long-term care homes, and after the military needed to be called in to help care for seniors in long-term care homes, it is very clear that the federal government needs to play a role in coming up with solutions. So what we're proposing is we need to work with provinces and territories to develop a care guarantee. That's a guarantee to seniors that they'll be cared for, a guarantee to families that their loved ones will be cared for, and a guarantee to workers that they will be paid well and they will have the protections they need so they can do their work without risking the fear of transmission. It also means ensuring that we increase funding to long-term care homes. Federal governments have been cutting funding for health and the painful impact of that, those cuts, are the deaths that we've seen in long-term care homes. We've also seen, and a final point on, on long-term care, is that the for-profit, private long-term care homes have been the site of the worst conditions. Your people, seniors, were four times more likely to die in for-profit centers in Ontario than in the not-for-profit or public long-term care homes Across this country, for-profit long-term care homes have been where the worst conditions have been seen and witnessed and experienced by seniors. So we don't believe, and, and I think Canadians support that, we don't want to see vulnerable seniors have to go through a profit model where the goal is to make a profit, which might mean cutting care, cutting access to services, cutting funding or staffing. That is a wrong approach to taking care of our most vulnerable population. Donc, euh, euh, aujourd'hui, je propose deux choses. Euh, premièrement, et c'est tellement important après ce qu'on a vu avec la crise de la COVID-19 que tout le monde a besoin d'accès euh, à un congé de maladie payé. Et euh, comme le premier ministre de la Colombie-Britannique a dit, c'est important d'avoir une réponse, une solution fédérale parce que les employeurs, les entreprises sont dans une position difficile maintenant. On ne peut pas le faire. Donc, euh, je suggère qu'on utilise le PCU ou l'assurance-emploi pour euh, fournir deux semaines d'un de, de, congé de maladie payé. Euh, deuxièmement, on a parlé des soins de longue durée et c'est clair que la situation est inacceptable. Plus que 80 des gens sont morts, euh, c'était été les, les personnes âgées dans les centres de soins de longue durée. Le premier ministre dit que ce n'est pas la responsabilité du gouvernement fédéral de trouver une solution, mais je rejette cette position. Je pense que c'est vraiment euh, la responsabilité du gouvernement fédéral de trouver une solution ensemble avec toutes les provinces et territoires. On a besoin d'une garantie de soins pour les les personnes âgées, pour les familles et pour les travailleurs et travailleuses. Et il faut aussi mieux financer les soins de longue durée. Et c'est ce qu'on peut faire ensemble. Donc, euh, et finalement, avec les soins de longue durée, les centres privés 
étaient les centres où on a vu les, les pires conditions pour euh, les personnes âgées, nos aînés. Et je ne crois pas qu'il y a une place dans notre société pour les profits quand on parle des soins pour les, les plus vulnérables, les, nos aînés. Donc, euh, ce sont mes, mes propos pour aujourd'hui et je suis prêt pour les questions. I'm ready for any questions that you might have. All right, we'll start the question period as usual. One question, one follow-up. We'll start with the questions on the phone and then turn back into the room. Uh, Operator au téléphone, first question on the line. Thank you, merci. Please press star one at this time if you have a question. Appuyez sur étoile maintenant pour poser une question. Notre première question est de Hélène Buzetti, du Devoir. À vous la parole. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur Singh. J'aimerais juste revenir à, à cette question euh, des armes à feu de style militaire. Je voudrais juste savoir votre position par rapport à une... Vous me dites quand y aller. Hélène, uh, you, uh, you can go ahead. OK, merci. Alors oui, bonjour, M. Singh. Euh, J'espère que c'est plus clair comme ça. Oui, euh, je, voulais revenir, je voulais revenir sur la question des armes à feu de style militaire. Le gouvernement a annoncé qu'il les interdisait. Je veux juste savoir votre position par rapport à une éventuelle clause grand-père qui permettrait aux gens qui ont déjà de ces armes de les garder. Vous êtes d'accord ou pas? Moi, je suis pour une introduction et ce, que, ce qui est proposé ne me semble pas comme une introduction. Une introduction, c'est une introduction. Et on a toujours dit que c'est important, les Canadiens sont d'accord, il faut avoir une introduction et c'est vraiment la responsabilité du gouvernement fédéral, du premier ministre Trudeau, d'expliquer ce qu'ils font parce que euh, s'il veut faire une introduction, c'est ce qu'on va appuyer. Oui, mais ce n'est pas très clair. Vous, êtes-vous d'accord pour que les gens qui possèdent de telles armes puissent les conserver ou pas? Non, parce qu'une introduction va dire que c'est interdit, mais euh, avec cette clause, euh, ce n'est pas clair. On, on appuie une position de compensation pour euh, les gens qui, qui ont ces armes, mais euh, on a toujours dit que notre position, c'est euh, il faut les interdire. Opérateur, prochaine question au téléphone. Merci. La prochaine question est de Lina Dib de la presse canadienne. À vous la parole. Oui, bonjour, M. Singh. Bonjour. Euh, moi, c'est au sujet des... Oui, bonjour. Au sujet des CHSLD, vous dites que c'est au gouvernement fédéral de trouver euh, une solution pour les centres de soins de longue durée. Je me demande, vous, la solution, d'après vous, c'est quoi? Oui, euh, la solution, ça prend aussi de travailler... Primordialement, c'est important qu'on travaille ensemble avec les provinces et les territoires de, de mettre en œuvre un soin, une garantie de soins. Parce qu'à ce moment, c'est vraiment, euh, ça, ça c'est la manque. Et on n'a pas la confiance que nos aînés sont bien protégés dans les centres de, de, de longue durée. Donc, ce que je propose, c'est une un garantie de soins. Ça, c'est pour, pour nos aînés. Il faut savoir qu'ils sont bien protégés pour les familles et pour les travailleurs et travailleuses. Et aussi, euh, on veut voir une augmentation de financement pour mieux financer les soins de longue durée. Donc, quand vous parlez de garantie de soins, vous pensez à quoi? À, à changer la loi euh, fédérale sur la santé pour, que, pour obliger les provinces à, à un certain critère? Pouvez-vous être un peu plus euh, concret? Oui. Donc, euh, on, on propose quelque chose de similaire que la loi euh, canadienne sur la santé, mais quelque chose comme un, une loi sur euh, les soins de longue durée. Mais c'est plutôt qu'on peut travailler ensemble en parlant avec les provinces de savoir c'est quoi les mieux pratiques et puis de créer des standards nationaux. Un, un soin, une garantie de soins veut dire que tout le monde sait que leurs proches sont bien protégés les aînés sont bien euh, et ils ont des meilleures qualités des services quand ils sont dans un centre de, de soins de longue durée. Opérateur, prochaine question au téléphone. Merci. Our next question is from Laura Osman from the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Singh. Good morning. 
Um, I wanted to ask you, first of all, about your um, proposal for paid sick leave. Do you see this as being something that is uh, temporary? At what point would you like to see it lifted off off of the government's shoulders in any case uh, throughout this pandemic? Uh, We want to see this as a permanent change, knowing that what we're faced with as a crisis has changed the reality for, for our country and for the world. And one of the things that has to change is that we can no longer have anyone ever go to work sick. If you're sick, you must stay at home. But right now, that's an impossible choice. If someone doesn't have paid sick leave, how could they stay at home? They've got to really make that tough choice. Do I go to work and and get paid but risk the transmission of this infection that they have? Or do they stay at home without paid sick leave knowing that they're not going to be able to pay their bills at the end of the month because they're missing out on those days of pay? That should never be a choice that any Canadian has to make. So what we're proposing is this should be long-term and permanent. Initially, uh, we are suggesting right now to immediately put this into place, let's use the CERB or the employment insurance as the vehicle to deliver the this paid sick leave of two weeks. Uh, moving forward, we can find out if there's other ways, but right away, let's get this done. This is important and it should be permanent. Fantastic. And I also wanted to ask you about long-term care. Um, And you've talked about this uh, care guarantee. I've been talking to some experts about what that might look like. Um, And they say that, you know, there's a major social component to long-term care. You know, it's a home. It's not just a medical facility. So can you provide any more detail about how you would like to see this regulated and funded from the federal government? Sure. I, I think that we've got a similar model that we can look to. It's the Canada Health Act that's created a set of criteria for federal governments to transfer money to provinces. Similarly, we could work with provinces and and territories to develop what are the best practices to make sure these long-term care homes are of the highest standard. We can look at examples of of long-term care homes that work around the world, but let's establish what is the best type of care that seniors need to have. And once we've established that, that care guarantee, Let's make sure that seniors know that they're going to be cared for, that family members know that their loved ones are going to be cared for, and the workers are well paid and have the protection they need so they can do their work. And let's make sure that there's good financing, good funding for this program so that people, we never are in this situation again where seniors have to bear the brunt of a pandemic. I mean, these are the folks that should have been the most protected and taken care of, but they are the ones who bore the brunt of this, and it's heartbreaking, and we cannot allow this to continue. We'll now take questions in the room. Ian? Ian Wood, CTV News. Uh, Mr. Singh, um, a little bit more on long-term care. I mean, that means a a lot of different things. There's assisted living, there's residential living. uh, Some involves nurses being in the homes. Some seniors are more independent. So, And we already have government or publicly funded long-term care. So who exactly would qualify to be in a – I'm just wondering – who is this directed at, long-term care under a federal Canada Health Act? Like, Well, I think we need to take a, a holistic approach. Uh, all of the care that we give to seniors needs to be viewed as a part of our healthcare system, and it shouldn't have been parsed out or considered something separate. It is complicated, but we know that the cost of not acting has been that the majority of deaths have been seniors living in long-term care, and particularly long-term care homes. So we need to make sure we change what we're doing and we improve dramatically and drastically and immediately. And that's why we're proposing this concept of a care guarantee. Everyone involved, particularly the seniors, loved ones and workers, need to know that there is going to be a standard of care, that they're going to be cared for. And and we need to make sure that that's, that's established. So then is this is this really a question then of the provinces having dropped the ball on one of their files and that the federal government needs to step in? Like, do we need a national inquiry into this? I think it's, it's a combination of the federal government uh, over the past years, conservative and liberal governments have cut the funding to healthcare in a pretty dramatic way. If you look at when healthcare started, the funding was even 50, 50. And over the years that's eroded to the point where it's now only about 25%. The federal government is delivering in terms of a transfer, and this, and 75% of the funding falls on the shoulders of provinces, meaning half of the funding provinces relied on was cut. The, the federal government has cut that, and that's impacted long-term care, and it's impacted hospital service, emergency rooms, but we're seeing the impact most severely in long-term care homes. Uh, one of my colleagues said the pandemic 
didn't uh, create the problems in long-term care. It exposed the problems in long-term care. Next question. Hi, Mr. Singh, Julie Van Dusen, CBC. Hi there. Uh, so just so I'm clear, so your care guarantee, I guess, would be part of the Canada Health Act? Is that it? It would fall under the Canada Health Act? Well, we're proposing something that's like the Canada Health Act, so a separate act that speaks to long-term care, similar to how we proposed a, a Canada Pharmacare Act that laid out the criteria for a national universal public pharmacare program, and it laid out the criteria we can do something similar, working with provinces and territories to develop what those standards are, what is a care guarantee, and then lay out that for seniors, for families, and for workers, these are the things that need to be established to make sure that they're all cared for so they can do their work so that the seniors that are vulnerable are cared for and families know that their, their loved ones are in a good place. So the Prime Minister seems resistant to that. He says it's a provincial problem. Uh, I mean, he's willing to advise or help or whatever. Obviously, some provinces don't like the idea. Um, I, I think Quebec, in particular, uh, is not interested in, in, in that. Um, you've got the for-profit uh, uh, care homes. Like, how would they fit under this public system? Um, how do you force all these people who are either in it for money or don't want to give up jurisdiction or something, how do you force them to, to uh, agree to putting it under a public system? So for the for-profit, I will start with that. Um, I, I made it really clear, and I, and I stand by this, that for-profit model of care for seniors has no place in our country. We've seen the evidence. The private long-term care homes have been the sites of the worst conditions. People are more likely to die and have died in higher numbers in the private long-term care homes. And if you think about it, Jane Philpott was saying this earlier. She said, if you think about a model of care which is based on making a profit, that's obviously going to have an impact on the type of care that's delivered. If the goal is to make money, then the type of care that's going to be delivered will be different. And if you think about the savings for a for-profit healthcare or a long-term care center, they have to carve in some of the money that's being spent has to go towards profit. So they're not spending all the money on actually care. And we found some research that says that on average, that for-profit centers spend about $10,000 less on the actual care of the residents there. So we know it's a broken model and it's not working. So I'm prepared to, to take any steps necessary for us to move towards getting rid of the profit in our care for seniors. And then how do we get the provinces to come together? Well, we know provinces are going through this right now. We know that Canadians are struggling with the fact that so many seniors have died. There is a willingness to look at this problem and say, well, we need to do better. So let's get the provinces together and the territories together. And the federal government has the tools to do that. Bring people together and say, well, what are the solutions? What are the problems? And how can we fix them? And let's develop a national standard, a care guarantee, which ensures that no matter where you live in this country, you're going to get excellent care if you're a senior in long-term care. Now back to the phone, uh, operator. Prochaine question au téléphone. We have no further questions. We just turn the phone back to you. Do we have any, do we have any other questions in the room? 